Hello. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking uh, about the four different types of people. Uh, we see this throughout God's Word. Uh, the first place, you know, that we uh, that that I've seen it is it was uh, it's in the Passover Seder. It talks about the four sons, uh, which we will be giving you the scripture at the end. I'll list it to where you can go back and look at it. But it tells you how to witness to the four different types of people. In in the Seder, it, it, it mentions the wise son, the wicked son, the simple son, and the son who knows not how to ask the question. And it shows you how to approach these type, these four different types of people and how to witness to them. Uh, in, in Mark chapter 4, we're going to be taking our first text from, uh, chapter 4, verse 14, it starts out, and it's the parable of the sower, which soweth the word. Uh, let's, let's read here and we'll, we'll talk about it. And the sower soweth the word, and they are they by the wayside, which uh, the word is sown. But when they heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So, you know, there's people that are standing by the wayside. They're, they're, they're not in the, the, the way of the Lord, which are sinners. This is putting people in the sinner spot. They're not in the way of the Lord. They're not on the road traveling to God's kingdom. But they refuse, They hear the word, but they reject it. Immediately. It says, immediately Satan comes and steals the word. They reject it from the very beginning. They won't hear of it. Uh, they just totally reject it and, and don't listen to it. It says, and they are these... Uh, or these are like they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endureth but for a time afterward, when affliction and persecution ariseth for the world's sake, immediately they are offended. In other words, these people. They, they, they receive it with gladness, but they don't let it sink into their heart. They still try to rely on themselves. And, and, and they don't, don't take the Word of God and let it put it in their heart and let it grow. And so when these troubles and all these things come about, they, they, they don't have that Word rooted in their heart. So they, it fails them very quickly. Uh, they they can't they won't pull they, they can't pull the scripture out of their heart and know how true it is and and be able to stand against the wiles of the devil like stand strong upon the word of God they are weak and so they they become offended very easily and fall away and it says and these are they which sown among thorns such as hear the word. And the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, enter in, choke the word, and become unfruitful. So, there's people that receive the word, but they, they don't get rid of the thorns in their life. The things that, that, that chokes the word, uh, their lust for uh, riches, their lust for things in this world, they, they, they can't, they won't let go of it. So the word can't grow, the word can't uh, expand itself in, its, in your life. Uh, you, 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 they don't let it grow to a point to where they, they become such a testimony for Jesus Christ. And, and they just never become fruitful. And now, when we're talking about this fruitful, you, ha you can go back to Galatians uh, chapter 5, around verse 26, and it tells you the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, meekness, uh, temperance, uh, th these things. And you know, when you have a fruit like an apple, let's take an apple for instance, you can't have an apple without the seed, or the core, or the peeling. Uh, all these things, the meat of the apple, all these things make up that one fruit. So all these things of the fruit of the Spirit has to come together for it to become a fruit. And it says, And they are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, 
some 60, and some 100 fold. So there's people who receive the Word of God. They put it in their heart as they read the Word of God. They put it in their heart. They hold it close to them. And it, it, and it grows because they, they take care of it. They, 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 they've prepared the ground. They, they, uh, just like a farmer, uh, you know, you have to weed it. There's things that get, try to get into your heart. To, well, we was talking about these uh, seeds among the thorns. These thorns try to grow in us and it cares of the world. And we have to go in there and we have to clean these things out of our lives. Uh, lust for things. Things that try to move in and, and keep... It wants to get in our hearts and choke the Word. But if it's good ground and we take care of that good ground, it will grow and be fruitful. Uh, Let's move over to chapter John, chapter 19, and verse 23. And it says, uh, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took His garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part. So we see here that they separated the garments and they all received a part. Just like in Mark uh, chapter 4 there about the parable of the sower. They all received the Word. They all received a part of the Word. And it says, And also his co coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, Therefore among themselves, Let us not rent it, but cast lots for it whose it shall be, that the Scriptures might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister Mary, and the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. Now, it's interesting, we, we talk about this coat. Now this coat was weaved by Jesus' mother because it was customary for, for uh, uh, the mother to uh, weave or fix, uh, make the clothes for her son. Uh, we see this in, in, in 1 Samuel when Hannah uh, is every year when she goes up to the temple and she t weaves and, and takes uh, Samuel a new coat every year. Uh, the reason she had to do it on a yearly basis is because Samuel was just, uh, he was uh, so small and growing that every year he had outgrown his uh, clothes that he ministered in. Now this coat was what he ministered in in the temple. Now it's like, you know, and, and Mary knew who Jesus was. The angel in Luke uh, tells us that the angel told Mary that he was the Son of God. She knew how important his ministry was. So when she weaved this, she took her time and she done it the, just beautiful. That It was weaved without a seam throughout. This is just... It's, now, we see that the four soldiers all received a part of the garment, but only one received the whole garment that was weaved throughout. You know, we look at the Word of God, it's weaved throughout. From beginning to the end, this whole Word is weaved together so beautifully. You know, I, I was telling a pastor one time that, you know, when I, a lot of times when I bring a message or a teaching, I don't know where to quit because it's all tied together so well. Where do you trim it off? Where do you cut away? It's all so important. It's all so beautiful when it all comes together. And that's what, it, that's what you know, this garment was representing is the Word of God. And, you know, it was her son who was the Savior of the world. And if we take this Word of God that is weaved throughout this beautiful Word and put it in our hearts that we can draw from it, 
that 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 also that it will come through our life and shine and and bring us to be blameless to bring us into being full of the love that we need to be that we as John wrote that we may be bold in the day of judgment when the world sees us or when the world comes at us that word can be so weaved into our life and in in our ways and our talk our walk or that the world cannot tear us apart because if you let it grow in your heart, you will know what it says. You will know you have a Redeemer. You know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming. So I, I hope that you have enjoyed this little lesson. And I hope that you can take and read the Word of God. See how it's weaved together. See what a difference if, you, if you'll open up your heart. Put a furrow in your heart. And plant this seed, this word into your heart, and let it grow, and let it just weave into every be part of the of your being. Let it be in your talk. Let it be in your walk. Let it be in your thoughts, your prayers. Well, thank you so much, and God bless.